Hello and welcome to the Coronavirus Lockdown live stream, the show that brings welcome levity to the end of the world, lifting the spirits of many of you currently in self-isolation by infecting as many as possible with comfort and distraction as the apocalypse unfolds. Now, unlike at the beginning of the past two lockdown live streams, you find me, viewers, on my own. That's right, I have left the link with the rest of the JW survey team, but so far, nobody has responded, even though as of last night, one or two were saying that they would be here. So probably it's just a case of one or two running late. So you will have to make do with just me, I'm afraid, at least for the time being. But we do have some questions that I can, uh, or comments that I can go through. This one was left, I think, last night by Gabrielle Spedding, friend of the show, Gabrielle. Hello, Lloyd. I will join you again tomorrow morning, but a little bit later because I was recalled to go back to work. I still need my Lloyd fix in the morning, LOL. Well, that's nice to know. And, uh, Joelle Brown says, I'm also a healthcare worker, and honestly, Lloyd, these live streams are so encouraging and fun. I laughed out loud several times yesterday. I'm going to need a more exact number of times you laughed out loud. Several is a little bit vague. Um, <laughs> it's like hanging out with friends. Thank you so much, Joelle. It's a pleasure to have you with us in the live chat. Uh, Nilda Gomez says, Don. I'm not a night owl anymore, and I'm missing these. Thanks for making them available after. Coffee and listening in might become my morning ritual during this lockdown. Yes, unfortunately, we are airing at a time when <laughs> most of America is either in bed or thinking about going to bed very shortly. So that's unfortunately, that's unfortunately just the way things are. Um, if I'm going to do a, a daily live stream, it sort of needs to be in the morning my time when I ordinarily don't have that much to do because I find as the day progresses, I get more and more busy. Uh, so you must forgive me, but at the very least, for those of you in America uh, and Canada, it must be said, and South America, let's not um, exclude South America, Obviously, the shows do end up on my YouTube channel one way or another. Um, Rianne says, hello, hello, Lloyd. I'll have my coffee ready. I'll take you up on that, Rianne. We want to see you there in the comments, if possible. Debbie saying, hope to be awake for this. Eric Larson saying, I woke up without the need of an alarm last night, seven minutes after it started for me, 2.30 a.m., I feel like that's Jehovah's hand in matters, right? Well, almost certainly. I mean, evidently, <laughs> Eric, it seems that uh, divine forces were making sure that you were paying rapt attention to the opening minutes of the lockdown live stream. Sharon Womack Freeman says, I so enjoy the fun you guys bring Crazy virus needs a good laugh from North Carolina, USA. Well, yeah, I mean, look, it's a deadly thing. It's it's literally taking lives and terrorizing people. But it's one of those things where you have to find the funny side or we'll all just be in sackcloth and ashes, won't we? Now, I am joined <coughs> by Sasha. Sasha, how, Hello. Do you, how, how do you account for this tardiness, Sasha? Uh, I was throwing my dinner down really quickly before I joined you, so my apologies to you and everybody. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Um, no, no, uh, but it won't be tolerated in future, just so you're okay. aware. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've been reprimanded. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, an entirely voluntary thing. Uh, just glad to have you on board. Uh, well, that's what he tells you, viewers. The reality is we get worked like, like, oh, he's a taskmaster. Joking, just joking. <laughs> and Arthur saying, I might bring you on, Arthur. Why not? Um, evidently, Jehovah's Hand proves to be of great support in a large way. <sighs> okay, I'll bring you on if you promise not to be quite so triggering. 
um, <laughs> in, in, in the way you mimic <laughs> Jehovah's Witness publications. <clears throat> so if you can agree to dial it down a little bit, because we are, after all, trying to encourage people and uplift people. Well, that's <laughs> that's triggering, encouraging, uplift. Do you want there See, to be an interchange? In trying of to tell Arthur to be less triggering, <laughs> I end up being triggering. So it's, <laughs> I, I, I just can't win, can I? Um, so let me uh, just, if you'll just allow me to um, gather my thoughts, viewers, I do need to uh, get a link to Arthur so that he can right. join us. <clears throat> well, while um, you do that. Yeah. Um, while you do that, I've got greetings to pass on from a whole lot of people on the Australian um, XJW support Facebook group. Um, we put a little post up today and just um, asked if anybody had any questions or things they wanted to pose to the panel and any thoughts or observations they've had. We've had uh, quite a few people pass on greetings and appreciation for our inane waffle. Um, it's kept them company. So thanks for that, everyone. And a few little questions put through, a few little suggestions. I can't really so, argue with inane waffle. That, that no. is pretty much what it is, isn't it? And it's kind of what, what we're I going thought. for. <laughs> it's just a chat. It's the sort of conversation we'd have with or without a live stream, but one pretty that people well. can listen into, basically. Yeah. Pretty well. Yep. You're all part of it. This is what happens when people descend into claustrophobic madness. This is what happens. <laughs> Indeed. So is, is that the end of the message? Oh, no. So I had a couple of people that um, even sent us some video messages via Facebook, but I haven't had their approval as yet as to whether they wanted us to broadcast them. But um, I will have a re uh, refer back to that and maybe tomorrow's broadcast we can play that. Just a few sure. people passing on their, their greetings to everybody. So I just don't want to play anybody's message until I've got permission or confirmation that they're happy to go uh, on online. Um, but there were some really good um, suggestions, like a few people had suggestions on um, what sorts of entertainment we could uh, suggest for people while they're in this locked up uh, situation, any sort of movies, pop culture, um, any sort of um, I would TV suggest, series. I would suggest movies that aren't related to pathogens or virus. I, I mean, I went on um, um, Apple Movies the other day, and one of the top movies was called Contagion or something, yeah, which I think yeah. I, is that the one with Kate Winslet in it? I think maybe I, it is. I can't remember, but and definitely thinking, parallels things. Yeah. Why why would you want to watch that? You'd have to be there'd have to be something, you know, diagnosable with you <laughs> to to want to immerse yourself in the very worst case scenario of of what a pathogen pathogen could do. I want escapism during True such times as this, but obviously not everyone's the same as me, thank goodness. Although, it could be said, watching these movies um, helps us to maybe compartmentalise what's really happening around us and makes us just think it's it's another movie. I don't need to stress about it. It's just a movie. Yeah. Um, escapism, in a sense, by, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sort of know. tempted to watch, oh, what's it called now? Um, I Am Legend. Oh. Oh. But... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that that really is taking things to an extreme, isn't it? Um, and, and to be honest, Sasha, I'm not a massive fan of um, of kind of gory films, uh, well, but I do remember walking. what I, I do remember enjoying that. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was an amazing movie. Mm. Um, of course, the parallels to Walking Dead. Everybody loves that uh, the Walking Dead series, the descent into what happens when humans lose uh, dignity and chaos ensues but yes oh here uh, is a human with lots of dignity um but very little um sensitivity when it comes to the way he brandishes cult lingo hello uh, there everyone <laughs> how are you arthur yeah, how are things how are things in romania well uh, this morning it's uh it started to to get isolated for everyone i mean no one is allowed on the streets as of as of today right, right. because uh since uh, since saturday uh, they're they're they issued a recommendation for us not to go on the streets but now uh, today it became uh, compulsory except and is that for enforced yep enforced sorry yeah right. enforced 
it was enforced during the night between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., but now it's mm -hmm. uh, enforced 24-7. Wow. wow. Except for, yeah, getting your groceries or getting uh, medical emergencies or going to work. Sure. Mm. And what are the numbers like in Romania of those affected? Uh, almost 800 infections confirmed and 12 deaths. 12? Gee. Yep. We, we've only had, I think, one or two in Croatia. So, faring worse. Mind you, you're, you're kind of more in the direction of where the things come from, aren't you, I suppose, in Romania than... Mind you, we're, well, we're, we've got Italy on the other side, so yeah, it's strange but, uh, how it works, isn't it? Luckily, mm. luckily, here in the west western part of Romania, in Oradia, there aren't too many cases. I, I, last time uh, I heard there were two or three, but then uh, the county author authorities didn't uh, give to the press the, the exact numbers, so we only have uh, national -wise, nationwide statistics. Right. Yeah, goodness yeah. knows what the true figures are. I mean, I think Russia is still pretty much in denial, isn't it? And mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm. pretending the problem exists everywhere else. So, yeah, very mm. odd. Uh, let's go to a voicemail because we've had another voicemail through. Uh, by the way, let me just give again the... Um, the address for if you want to leave a voicemail for future live stream lockdown live streams and this one is okay I, I can't actually remember who the name of the person who left it but again I'm I'm limited with my technology a little bit uh, so let me just play it to you old school through the microphone again Hi Lloyd from Canada. I wanted to say thank you for uh, having these daily live streams, even though I can't watch them live. I really enjoying them uh, at night after work. Um, I know in the past you've discussed whether the governing body fully believes the doctrine or, or if they're self-aware and that they're running this human organization. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that in the context of how they're responding to the coronavirus. To me, it seems like for a financially strained organization, it makes a lot of sense to protect the elderly who have more assets and who are contributing more. Um, so I was wondering if you think that was a factor in their decision to obey Caesar's law and how that factors into whether they are diluted in their own doctrine or if they're actually running an, an organization and are aware of what they're doing. Thanks. Okay, so we, we did Ooh. sort of skirt around this whole issue um, in, a, in one of our earlier episodes um yeah so there's there's there are mixed feelings on this and i accept that i accept that different um ex jehovah's witnesses are going to have different views on this uh, my own feeling is that the situation is nuanced you know when we're dealing with the mind we're dealing with something that's very complicated something that we all know has the ability to hold two contrasting ideas at the same time uh, i think that if any group of men um, are going to know the full scope of the horror and corruption of this organization. It's going to be the governing body. So to a degree, there's bound to be some amount of, you could say, cynicism going on. But at the same time, I listen to an awful lot of broadcasts by these men and many, many hours of them speaking. And I'm personally convinced that at least to some degree, they are they have bought into their own bs as it were so i think it's a little bit of both now when it comes to the coronavirus and the way they've responded to it i've obviously been praising to some degree the fact that you know lives are going to be saved by their approach of saying well listen let's let caesar dictate what happens here and if caesar says that we're not to go to the kingdom halls we won't go to the kingdom halls i can easily see it going the other way um but i also think that there's an element of self-preservation going on you mentioned about the donations i don't think it's so much that i think it's that the governing body are you could say prime candidates for the coronavirus if you look at their age um, and even though I've been, I think, fairly generous with my praise, it must nevertheless be noted that when they had the 148th Gilead graduation, 
they stopped outsiders from attending an event that they were attending. In other words, they were protecting themselves while at the same time, to at least some degree around the world, meetings were still going on at that point. So I, I think that to some degree there's an element of Wow, this threatens us. So this is this is where things get serious. So I, I do with, think that that is a factor. Yeah. No, that that's yeah, good observations. But were there laws in place in that part of the US where the graduation was taking place that they had to at, be seen? I don't to think at that point. No. Right. I don't okay. think at that point. I, um, I'm not monitoring the the laws, by the way, in America. But I, I'm my understanding right. is that it's still fairly behind the rest of the world, America. You know, an example being in yesterday's show, we were, we were commenting on um, Salt Lake City where you had families welcoming Mormon missionaries gathering in an underground car park in massive crowds. So I, I believe, believe that back in, uh, back in on March 14th when they had the Gilead graduation, uh, they had only large gatherings cancelled. So it wasn't against the law to have 112 individuals in the Patterson Auditorium. But they were, in that day. They were individuals who'd already been in a, in a fairly quarantined environment, as it yes, were. They'd yes. already been in a compound where they hadn't had much contact with the outside world. Exactly, you know? yeah. Okay, so yeah. I believe they're locked down a lot more now. Um, I think that the, they have brought in a lot more of a lockdown situation. If we believe some of the news reports that we've seen, and please to any, any viewers who are from the states, they might be able to clarify it. Um, I believe there's certain states or certain regions, uh, certain counties that even have um, the authority for, for law enforcement or military to enforce um, people not being out and about. So uh, I. I'd appreciate clarification from anyone, but that's just a few tidbits I've picked up from the media. Here. Yeah, if you are in America and you know maybe a little bit more about what the situation on the ground is in terms of restrictions, we would love to hear from you. Um, I'm scrolling through the comments as we speak. Lovely to hear from uh, Yvette Fiquette. Can't believe I'm still awake. At least I'm not missing <laughs> this this time round. Lovely to have you with us. Yvette. Absolutely. Join us. Join us. You've got the link. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if you want to, come on, Yvette. I mean, for goodness sake, if you're awake, let's have some American representation yeah, definitely. on the show. Um, Brandon, if he's awake or if he needs to be stirred to get you the link, <laughs> it's on his, uh, on his WhatsApp. Just hit him with a pillow. Come on, wake him up. Join In fact, us. just hit him anyway um, <laughs> yeah. and, and tell us what the reaction is. The John Cena's channel does not condone hitting people with pillows. Unless it's Disclaimer. Brandon. Unless, Unless it's Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> I, th I think, look, a little bit of mindless violence, surely. I mean, this is all in the name of entertainment. Uh, Absolutely. If, if people are going to be entertained by Brandon being hit with a blunt object randomly <laughs> while he's sleeping, <laughs> I think it's in the service of a greater good. I really do. Um, and it's also the... worth mentioning that these pillows are branded by Gary Bro himself. Oh, good grief. There you go again. <laughs> trying to trigger people. Oh, don't Esteban one of Justin those. says, good morning again from sunny Germany. Yes, it is sunny here. It's still like Hoth here in Croatia. Lots of snow just outside the bunker door. Any ideas on voluntary activities that can be done to support those on the front line? Gosh. I'm not Excellent. sure that this show's sophisticated enough to offer that level of advice, to be honest. Um, That's a lovely, um, lovely thought, though. The fact that you've thought like that. Yeah, that there are. People I suppose. On the front line are doing if it I, tough. if I were to echo the sentiments of at least the NHS, their advice is: please help us by staying home. You know, mm. you are. Mm. You may not think you're doing your part by staying in, in self-isolation. But the truth is, if you were to ignore self-isolation and go out and circulate, you would be adding to their woes. You would be adding to putting a further strain on the local healthcare services. So probably I'd just repeat what, what the NHS is saying, and presumably the same would apply in Germany. Mm, um, absolutely. Um, there have been quite a few reports here in Australia of different businesses and individuals 
taking the initiative to to help. Um, for example, we had a couple of um, uh, distilleries that normally uh, make alcoholic beverages transform their production line into producing hand sanitizer and then doing that almost at cost or below cost just to be able to get that into the market and to help those on the front line. There's been reports of clothing boutiques turning their sewing machines into um, equipment to manufacture masks, which is beautiful. So I suppose if we've got any specific skills or if we're good at mechanical engineering or any sort of engineering skills and can be put to use to make ventilators, there's plenty of government departments that could be contacted, I'm sure, in every country. And, and your hand can go up and just say, I'm skilled at doing such and such. I'm sure they'd appreciate the offer. We've had uh, another comment through uh, from Rian saying, we'll be expecting another beautiful poem oh. from Sasha. Now, viewers, what, view to, <laughs> what, what viewers don't know, Rian, is that after the show ended uh, yesterday, I received uh, a phone call from Australia and um, he's smiling, but it was actually Sasha's agent. Oh. I was firmly reprimanded for not giving Sasha more airtime with his oh, poetry yeah. and not Evans. taking his not taking his poetry seriously enough. So what I've decided to do is give Sasha a regular slot on the show, giving him an opportunity to enlighten the world with his poetry. So here begins Sasha's Poetry Corner. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Sasha. <laughs> oh. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now let's get do this. We've got to do this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, I need to. There we go. Oh. <laughs> all right. Um, damn it, Evans, you've done it again, making me rhyme off the top of my brain. Surely our friends would rather prefer something of value so to you I'll defer and insist that you lull us and sing us a song with those sweet dulcet tones that we all do long for. for. Okay, that didn't work. But come on, it was almost there, guys. Oh, so, that was great a Great job, Sasha. <laughs> That was a thing of beauty, it must be said. For which we do long. For which, there we go. So you can work. I think I think that one way or the other, we've provided a service there. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe a jarring experience for some who were on the verge of falling asleep. Um, yeah, they're now actually, wide got, awake. Actually, I got a text yesterday from Terry O'Brien himself praising Sasha's... Oh, uh, our this friend is Terry. Thing. I mean, oh, as, as much... More. As much as I resent being intimidated in that way by Sasha's agent, he does have a point. You know, this is a talent that needs to be brought more to the fore. And and so And promoted. I'm promoted. So I'm glad that Sasha now has his own poetry corner for each and every show on which he appears. And uh I look forward to more offerings mm. of that kind. But you haven't yet taken up the challenge. Our dear friend Evans, you haven't what taken challenge? Cha well, the to challenge sing. in my poem was that you have to lull us with your sweet dulcet tones and sing a song for everybody. I, I do recall some time back uh, on another look, podcast. Look, look, D'Souza, that you you've already agent. threatened me with your agent. You're not going to threaten me again with more demands. I've already, I've already indulged you with one demand. That's quite enough for now. <laughs> and also, I want to keep my viewers because uh, we, we currently <laughs> don't, have 55. Don't you have the voice of an angel? We, we currently have 55 <laughs> watching along, 57 in fact. And I'm pretty sure those numbers would nosedive if I were to uh, start singing. Um, let's just... <laughs> he said as he drastically tried to change the subject by picking another comment. Oh, no, we'll, um, we'll, we'll circle back. <laughs> Yvette says, 
he did have those pillows in Bethel. Oh dear, just realizing. Well, conversations need to be had in the Fiquette household, it seems. Um, but Yvette, why aren't you joining us? Mm. Um, let's just see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I think I might have missed some comments from Yvette. I'm just trying to scroll through. In fact, one of the things I'm glad about that about this not being on YouTube is that if we were on YouTube, there would be so many comments, it would be really, really hard to navigate through them. But right. because there are only just over 55 watching, it makes it easier for me to scroll through. So I can't see readily a reason. There's another comment from Yvette. Shelter in place Ooh. order was recent. Ah, so that's actually a, a time. But we need you here to tell us this stuff. Yvette. Yeah, we'd love to know the details. We want to hear from someone on the ground in Yvette. So just to take uh, it back I'll, to a more... I'll, get, I'll have to get Brandon to figure out that link. So hopefully okay. Yvette's working on it. Yeah. Good, good. Um, yeah, to take it back to that more serious note, you talked about the shelter in place in New York. Um, we're getting sporadic reports over here, but my understanding is there is gross shortage of, um, of uh, the respirators in New York and masks and so on. It, uh, I, again, appreciate clarification on that. And Lisa I Noonan saying New York is on lockdown except for nece nece necessaries, pharmacy, supermarkets, etc. If out aimlessly, could be fined. So they are the same as in order. Romania. Yeah. yeah. Right. And is that New York's? We're talking New York State. The whole. Or I would assume it's a state, a statewide thing. Yeah. Right. I, would I wonder imagine. how. Um, I wonder how the governing body must feel now, having relocated Bethel just in the nick of time. Uh, out to the back blocks. It would oh, almost they'll seem feel, like they'll feel that's Jehovah's hand, won't they? Surely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Undoubtedly, we oh, are very we grateful <laughs> for Jehovah to have given us this timely recommendation to his faithful and discreet slave for us <laughs> to isolate ourselves. I'd like to apologize for viewers who may be triggered by Mr. Weber. Uh, unfortunately, he does have a psychopathic sense of humor um, and doesn't quite understand quite how triggering his words are. So just a, a little apology on behalf of all affiliated with JW Survey and the John Cedars channel. Sorry, you were saying, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm in, I'm in control. I've got the controls here. I can do all sorts. I know. Sorts. I know. I know. I have unlimited power. As, yeah, as you Palpatine are, you, would as, say, as unlimited body. power. <laughs> <laughs> you're the 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 you are the faithful and discreet host for this uh, live stream. Uh, fr mm. A comment from Twitch. A drill. I don't know whether what what the significance of the name is. Maybe they just like drills. I don't know. Um, Good morning from UK. The coronavirus caused my judicial oh. committee to be postponed. Wow. Well, now there's a story. I'd like Ooh. to, if it weren't for the fact that obviously privacy is called for, I'd love to hear that in a voicemail or something. But mm. um, I'm not happy about it at all. I wanted to have it sorted by now. Yeah, I can imagine mm. the the being um, unease with everything just being up in the air. You're going to want resolution at a time like this, aren't you? So. That's actually an area that you you, pro you probably don't immediately think, Sasha and, and Arthur. You you probably don't immediately expect that that to be an issue with the coronavirus. Mm. But yeah, I can imagine it. Yeah, very interesting. Thanks for dropping the comment to us. But I imagine there's a lot of little things behind the scene that that have been disrupted from the organisation's point of view. And I can't imagine them wanting to do a video conference judicial committee um, because there's you know they, the power and or the control uh wouldn't be present um yeah very interesting i i hope things go well for you yeah uh, and that things sort out as as soon as they can but um our don't thoughts, let them have too much control over you either indeed our yeah. thoughts are with you and however you need to navigate Definitely. that situation i hope you're able to um yes. David Morgan says far too much time was spent on that intro actually it didn't take that long um I just chose some stock video footage and some classical. It was actually it took me longer to find the right music. I wanted to find something that was suitably, suitably sophisticated for for Sasha, and also I was I felt very threatened by his agent, and I wanted it to be <laughs> spot on. Right, so, um, <laughs> Claire McKay 
likes the fact that we have beards. Arthur, you're letting the team down, I'm afraid, because Claire yeah, because is disappointed my, in you. You know, my facial hair isn't uh, something that uh, is it's not expected substantial by, enough. Yeah, by, uh, by JW survey standards. It's one of those things where you, you, you wait for it to grow and it's like waiting around it's like armageddon's just around the corner it, it just never quite arrives yeah is it yeah. like that okay so i wonder on that note i wonder how many um witnesses will be um brothers well hey sisters too if beauticians are closed down how many will be growing beards while they can just watch the meetings from home and how many will get away with the fact that they don't have to keep up their regular um grooming routine as dictated by the organization <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Will there be any uh, rela relaxation of the grooming? Well, there was a, there was a topic on JWTalk.net about uh, dressing yeah, Arthur up. Yeah, Arthur actually, even though he's never been a JW, he is so anxiously following the organization that he is registered covertly on JWTalk.net, a forum that's just for JW. So carry on, Arthur. Uh, yeah, there was a topic uh, about... Uh, dressing for online meetings and uh really yeah yeah because uh, people were were actually uh putting the question do i have to dress up when meeting uh on zoom <laughs> and yeah some uh, some of the friends said that these the zoom meetings being official congregation meetings it's uh, more dignified to to dress up properly as if going to the Kingdom Hall. Wow. Another wow. comment from um, a drill. I'm not sure if it's allowed. After all, I could be recording it. I know that they don't announce disfellowshipping now. They wait for the regular meetings to return. So uh, I've just the bunker has a visitor in the form of my lovely wife. So just bear with me a moment. Diana, will you appear on camera? What's that? Sorry. It's on Twitch or Facebook. Diana doesn't hear us it's right now. Camera. Oh, please. <laughs> it's facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Evan. I can't believe I'm having to do this with my own wife. <laughs> <laughs> and and twitch.tv forward slash Lloyd Evans. Diana, there are fifty-seven people on the live stream now who've somehow managed. That's my per that's my profile. I'm talking about my page. Diana could just uh, click on the link and join us. I'm, I'm sorry, Diana's inability to access the live stream is actually impacting on the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get that smoothie if you uh, if you keep. <laughs> Staring her up. You oh, won't get that smoothie or that today, juice. Am I? No. And, and neither your bacon and eggs. Mm. Well, I don't get. We've already established this. <laughs> That's I know, but I'm kidding. Now. now that the door's been open for a few seconds, the bunker is suddenly cold. Is it still um, snowing outside? I feel very put upon, viewers. I feel a bit tender <laughs> at this moment. Oh. I, well, I, I, well, I need a bit of a hug. <laughs> Well, perhaps if you just sing a song for all your viewers, it would help to calm you and calm the viewers down. Let's find another comment. Yeah. Uh, Tamar says, one thing that can help frontline services, apart from staying home, is contacting vulnerable people, especially who are isolated, checking in with them. Um, people's mental health is more at risk at the moment. Contact can really help and prevent crisis which keeps people out of A and E. And at that at this moment I'm going to Ooh. add the Fiquettes. Ooh. The Fiquettes are joining us. <laughs> I got beat to death by a pillow. Hey, Thanks you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was Mindless a violence in the to go. household. To go. <laughs> and we have some questions about that pillow too. Yeah. <laughs> it was soft and plushy. <laughs> <laughs> Wondered why you loved it so much. <laughs> Well, we're absolutely, pillow. we're absolutely <laughs> delighted to see you both. Let me just put you on full there for a moment so we can see you. Oh, wow. Uh, so what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> have you have you literally been woken up against your plans for this? 
Brandon. What, what, what does this tell you? <laughs> well, my hair looked fine, but I had to put on some lipstick, so it's, it's fine. Yeah. Well, thank like, you for it's for taking aliens one for the team. <laughs> We're glad you could join us. Absolutely thrilled you could yeah. join us. So obviously, it's incredibly late where you are. What time is it? Uh, it's one one o five in the morning. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and and what's the what's the situation on the ground? Uh, where you are? Well, we are shelter in place as of yesterday. Yeah, mm-hmm. yesterday. yesterday at five o'clock. So right. everyone's working from home. Jonah's sure. home from school. Yep. Until That's those who knows those that have got work, as you say, that um, that can work from home. I'd, what's the community feeling about those who have lost? work i imagine there's a lot of places there that have had to close down a lot of people out of work there is a lot of people out of work um the dental offices so i work at a dental office they're all got closed down until may 18th so and that's gonna be awkward because if anyone has toothache, they're going to have to put up with that toothache that, now for a long time. Except for emergencies. Oh, right. Except okay. for emergencies. So, right. but I work in an ortho office. What are we going to do? Like, yeah. no one died from crooked teeth. The, the more elective <laughs> stuff has been postponed. Yeah. Yeah. Because sure. yeah. I actually well, had that- to go to the dentist during the pandemic here in Croatia, and obviously the the surgery had it had um, the hand sanitizer outside the door. Uh, people, everyone inside had the masks on. They were making sure I had a mask on. They were actually making me sign a declaration saying that I hadn't been traveling or anything like that. So they were taking it incredibly seriously. And they, but they had to operate on me because I was in, I still had an unfinished root canal. Uh, mm-hmm. So they needed to basically finish me up. So, but you could tell that they were taking it very seriously. Yeah. Well, I know here too, when it comes to unnecessary medical procedures, um, Sherry was saying that the hospitals that she works in conjunction with have basically shut down all of their operating lists, apart from a couple of operating theatres that have been reserved in cases of trauma, if there's vehicle accidents or something like that, that they have to keep a couple of wards available. But um, other private hospitals and private wards have been um, used to sort of transfer some of the necessary operations that need to take place. And then from next week on, they're probably going to shut down all of those lists too. So it's quite serious. They've had new guidelines written as to um, what is deemed necessary operations for, for example, for melanoma treatment for the patients that she helps take care of. Wow. And yeah, they, they're going months into this and it does mean that people who would ordinarily be seen in two three four weeks may be longer um so who knows what the the toll is that that will take on on our societies around the world by having to put off those operations yeah while you were sleeping brandon um we had a a voicemail from a viewer who was asking about the degree to which the governing body might be it was, they were indulging in this whole, are they cynical, are they deluded thing, and they were particularly oh, yeah. looking at the response to the coronavirus and whether the the measures that have been taken have been aimed at you know, protecting a demographic that's more able to donate, perhaps. Um, mm. You've obviously been in Bethel. You've been in close quarters with the governing body. Uh, yeah. First of all, how do you respond to the, the the issue of are they deluded or are they cynical? And and also, how do you feel about the the measures they've put in place with regards to COVID nineteen? Hmm, that's a good one. Uh, it's uh, I'll take the first one, the, the deluded part. Um, I, I I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I've got the you know, it, it's hard to believe that they don't know, uh, especially with. Uh, all the avenues of uh, them getting information on the the problems that people have, uh, as well as the the measures uh, they've taken with things like the 587, 607 uh, stuff. It, it, it's hard to believe that they haven't looked into it and that they're not actively covering that to a certain degree. Um, I I don't know. I think it's yeah. it's it's one of those it's one of those things where we we just don't know. And it could could be some of them. No, and some of them don't, and some of them actually really believe it. But it's it's hard to speculate. I don't I don't know. 
Yeah. Um, Have you got any thoughts on that, Evie? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I think it's... Uh, I I have no idea. I yeah. I don't know them personally, so mm. it's hard to say what their their thoughts are for yeah. that. It is interesting that they shut down Bethel so tight, though. Yeah. Mm. Before anything else was shut down, so at least they're taking it seriously. Sure. Yeah. There, there, there's a there's a couple folks that I I can still see stuff of uh, that were Bethelites, and for a while last week they were still coming and going and working on built construction projects and such. And I, I started seeing stuff yesterday and the day before yesterday where they were actually, yeah, Bethel's on lockdown. Hmm. Yep. So. Right. Okay. And um, <clears throat> uh, what are your thoughts on their response to COVID-19? Um, I, I got to give them credit where credit's due there. I mean, it's, <laughs> they're, they're, they're following direction of, of the superior authority. Of, of course, they're going to tell, tell everybody that, you know, uh, we're, we're ahead of this and we're, we're on this, but I mean, we're also following direction of, <laughs> of the, you know, the, the scientists and, and the, the, the superior authorities on how to mm-hmm. try to get control of this situation. So um, I, I think they'd, they'd be in a lot, very hot water if they were not taking the precautions. Um, hmm. I, I don't know. I, it's hard. Yeah. Well, that being said, I just read an article today that said they are starting to treat, they just got the okay to treat patients with the the COVID-19 patients who are in critical condition with the blood plasma. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hmm, but mm. well, they don't want their people to die because of disease, but well, where's that line? Yeah. Mm. It's going to be an interesting. When you say they got the okay, do you mean the authorities have started using that? Presumably, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, not the yeah. witnesses, of course. Yeah, <laughs> the witnesses are like just throw everything out the window, like yeah. blood for all. No, yeah, no. no. It, sounded, it sounded like they were taking blood from from recovered patients potentially to have built up an immunity, and then giving it to ones that were in critical condition. Yeah, that that. Oh yeah, I, I think I sent that to yeah, yeah, Sasha yeah, yeah. earlier. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a. That <laughs> Yeah, that's very interesting. If that works, what a, what an amazing uh, breakthrough already! It's um, it's amazing that in such a short time they've thought of doing that to help patients. Mm-hmm. So presumably hopefully. that wouldn't be an ideal long term solution. Presumably, no. but no, it I would certainly be a good short term fix, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It feels a bit old school, but yeah, if it works, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Bring up the leeches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Arthur, yeah, would, would, would you have would you have the plasma, Arthur? If you what? needed it, if you would you have the plasma if you needed it? Uh, sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <was a thing. laughs> Go back to sleep, Arthur. I was it's following done. some comments on. Uh, oh dear, <laughs> it's on JW on... Talk again. That's what it is. <laughs> no, no, no. It does seem very um. When you think about it, though, it does seem very much like the the plot of a of a sci fi movie, doesn't it? The fact that yeah. uh, um we would inject the plasma in from somebody else and then they. It morphs into something that takes over the world. It, it feels yeah. like we've watched this movie before. Rian, right. Rian so wants it Arthur like to I know. Am legend that, or something. Indeed, yeah. Rian wants Arthur to know that she loves him. So oh. it's nice to know. Yeah. I don't get out. messages yeah. like that. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Rian. Not Thank that you, I'm Rian. jealous or anything, but uh, you know. <laughs> our own episode of The Bachelor here. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, well, Connie... uh, no, Rian, Rian can could be my my mother because uh, her, her <laughs> son Arthur's is already older figured than me. this out. Arthur's already <laughs> been on her profile and, and done the math. Um, <laughs> Connie McCargis. You know, you know, Lloyd. We, we've all we've all learned in September 2019. Do the math. Do the math. Do the math, yeah. as David Splain likes to say. Um, here in Oregon, we're on lockdown as well. The whole state, they have closed everything except for essential businesses. Is Oregon south of you guys? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, you risk a Class C misdemeanor for not following. So, wow. Can more. I speak as to what they class essential businesses as? Because here um, yesterday, Australia took the, the next step when went finally went to the next stage because everybody's been too complacent here in Australia. Um, but the list of what is classed essential includes, for instance, um, 
<laughs> department stores, grocery <clears throat> stores, grocery stores, I can understand, pharmacies, hairdressers. Hairdressers are classed as essential, but you can have oh, only a 30-minute appointment. So it seems as if COVID-19 is not able to get onto you in 30 minutes, but if you stay there at 31 minutes, you're, you're in trouble. It's the 30-minute rule. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it just seems ludicrous. So nail salons are out, uh, waxing salons are out, but hair salons are fine. I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have to imagine that there's some additional tiering of essential classifications in there, like as things would tighten up that would not include hairdressers. No, hairdressers have been out of business for two yeah. weeks because my appointment got canceled. Here, so. I, don't, I don't think I don't know if they're classified as essential here. But yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So my hairdresser I mean, we... very rarely sees anything from me, so <laughs> as you may be aware. Nope, so. Everyone does. <laughs> Uh, it just would be amazing to see some sort of uniformity. Um, you know, a, again, yesterday, our Prime Minister was asked by, by the entourage of media, can you please define what is classed as a necessary, um, a necessary activity? And he said, well, if you need to go to work, that's necessary. So apparently working is necessary. Uh, what that work is, well, there's those few exclusions in there. Um, but he said, anyone who's got a job, you've got to go to work, that's necessary. So this whole balance between keeping the economy going and also taking care of people, I'm sure, as you say, Brandon, there's the next stage that they're going to have to go to. But at the moment, driving around today, there was no difference. There, there was no difference in the street that I could see. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And arguably, without getting too political, that's just a straight-up lack of leadership, isn't it? Because yes. health and life has to come ahead of you know, keeping the status quo running. The status quo is there to service health and life, not the other way around. So you, you like to think that governments would be more proactive, but Australia does seem to be behind. We were talking the other day about, you know, crowds on Bondi Beach and could you, could you, Koo Beach or whatever it's called. Um, That's the one. <laughs> Aussie is just apparently taking this very lackadaisical attitude. Um, yeah, it's, it's sad though because it's going to cost lives, isn't it? Um, well, we're down to things like you you can't have, um, and, and to give them credit where credit's due, uh, you can only have five people at a wedding now, which is the celebrant, the couple, and a couple of witnesses. You can only have 10 people at a funeral. <laughs> um, so fair enough, they're bringing in some strict laws. But outside, you can have um, people doing boot camp gym activities outside, but as long as there's spacing, um, and I think there's still a limited number of that, but... It just seems to be a little bit ambiguous in some cases, and there's people left wondering here in Australia: what can we do? What can't we do? Um, yeah, there needs to be it some. Seems like some more it wouldn't clear. be very enforceable that way. No, well, that's the next thing. What what are they going to do to enforce it? What what are the moves that they would or the measures they would put in place? We're we're not sure. Yeah. Now, this is obviously the coronavirus lockdown live stream, so we do talk a bit about said virus however we're also in the business of providing entertainment and levity for those of you who are in self-isolation and to that end we have a comment from jay proctor who wants to see <laughs> <laughs> arthur do a five minute five minutes is pushing it surely <laughs> uh, impersonation of tony morris get, get your mccallum bottle <laughs> uh, Some human hot dogs. <laughs> no, oh, nice one. Oh. No advertisement intended, but I have my coke. <laughs> oh, right. that's the wrong beverage, I'm afraid. He, he goes for something far more expensive. Before. Yeah. <laughs> so, where's your impersonation, Arthur? If Tony Morris. Sasha can't well. look. He's left entirely. <laughs> yeah, because uh, he's more of a. He's more of a. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> There's the McAllen. Wow. So does this inspire you as you try and imitate your idol? Lloyd, Lloyd if you could just switch the videos and put uh, Sasha on top, he can pour it over <laughs> in, in, into Arthur's mouth. Yeah. Well, thank you uh, a lot, uh, Sasha. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> was a bit too too much for this morning. Uh, but, uh, well, dear brothers and sisters, we're in a, um, a 
very difficult time today because for the past two weeks we've been in this heavy lockdown critical <laughs> times isn't it you know but this is expected it's absolutely mm. expected I, I mean it could be worse it will be worse i've seen it i've been telling the brothers <laughs> and the branch committee doesn't bother me inappropriate <laughs> inappropriate <laughs> So no, with, there's with just my, nothing more to say about it. It's, you know, it's not my, appropriate. My friends, it's definitely not appropriate. <laughs> no, no. You know, if you I could only me, do my impersonation while everyone was looking at Arthur. So <laughs> I thought that was okay. Oh, dear. But yeah, if, if, if we read, if we read, well, turn with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, hang on. Turn with me. If we read, I, I think I can see the problem in that sense. I'm, I'm, read, Arthur, you you're actually towing a fine line at this point. I may have to mute your microphone if you're any more triggering. Well, uh, I was doing this for change. You're taking the five minute thing far too literally. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks, <laughs> Jay. Look what you started, Jay. Look what you started. <laughs> Connie McCargis says grocery. Sorry for blocking out Sasha and um, uh, the cat. <laughs> household uh, grocery stores Blockers. liquor stores and weed shops pharmacies healthcare field and certain other businesses that are able to appoint a specific person to look over sanitation and social distancing measures can stay open if they can reasonably maintain social distance they can stay open however if they don't follow the rules they will be shut down definitely no hairdresser nail salons clothing stores or anything like that connie providing much needed clarity yeah, that on hmm. that issue um, morning from Cambridge. It's spooky here. How is it spooky? You see, I need more clarification on exactly how it's spooky in Cambridge. Is it fog? Is it, you know, the undead roaming the streets? A bit more clarification there needed, I think. Um, and Tamar, who we actually need to have on the show mm. at some point, uh, Tamar, do reach out to us if you're able to spare a morning. Uh, just seen that Jehovah's Witnesses are forwarding an article to XJW friends and family on a UN call for a ceasefire as evidence of a global call of peace and security. Mm. Gosh. You see, the thing is, you can find all sorts of nonsense articles, can't you? And and these do do the rounds among JWs. I don't know what we They've think about that. For years. Yeah. yeah. Years. Hmm. Tamo, you've you've made some um, you've made some really great points, and your previous comment as well was was excellent too. We're talking yeah. about supporting people, um, particularly in this lockdown, and taking care of their mental health. Um, yeah, very very good comments. Thank you for that. And feel free to to drop us more of a message because we appreciate yeah. your insights. Yeah, but I think Tamar hits on a, on a broader point, which is the fact that Jehovah's Witnesses really are jumping up and down at the moment, and it, to to a degree. I kind of want them to jump up and down because it will be even more embarrassing for them when eventually science comes to the rescue, which it almost yeah. inevitably will. It's just a matter of how long it takes and how many people are going to die. I'm kind of keeping an eye on, will this be worse or will it be uh, not as bad as the Spanish influenza of 1918, you know? Oh, yeah. um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But <coughs> one thing that this will not do is bring an end as far as we can tell, to humanity in the way that witnesses apparently would like it to. And the the footage of Stephen Lett, you know, drooling over this being the final part of the last days, that, again, will not age well. Undoubtedly. It's um, interesting, though, that it has, it has certainly played a very um, powerful... Um, uh, it has a powerful impact on a lot of those who are just starting to perhaps question the truth about the truth and starting to wake up. Um, it certainly wouldn't be the right time to just start to go down that, that route of investigating the, the truth about the religion. And even ones that, that I know personally that were very much, we thought, out have been motivated to run back into the arms of the organisation. Um, there's been reports of people receiving text messages from family members and pushing them, guilting them, manipulating them back in. Um, so probably from that point of view, it'll have an amazing impact in boosting the numbers. What will happen in five years' time once, as you say, we get through this and, and um, Armageddon hasn't come, 
well, that'd be interesting to see whether the numbers drop away again. Mm. Because obviously, the scene of the world is changing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm after. I've got to meet you for a bit, mate. It will, uh, and it will probably be towards the better. So after the pandemic is gone, everything will return to normal. Excellent. In that way, it's or changing. better than normal. Yeah. <laughs> Joelle Brown Sorry. saying, it's just amazing how we are so used to our total freedoms until it's taken away. We were talking yeah. about this the other day, uh, myself and Deanna, how you, you just, you don't expect, you, you, nothing can prepare you for the fact, for how it feels to literally have the road outside your house and know that you can't actually use it to get anywhere, you know, to, to just yeah. not have that basic freedom. And um, I was um, picking up on something that, Covert Fade said on Twitter the other day where he said he'd watched the movie Dunkirk and it made him realize that previous generations sacrificed so much. The least we can sacrifice is to just stay home to protect civilization. So it's a it's a worthy sacrifice, it, but it is nevertheless interesting how it affects you psychologically no longer being free to move around. Maybe it's worth talking about that for a moment. Mm. Yeah, and it definitely touches on the point that um, that was made earlier by Tamar, that mental health will be impacted. People will feel claustrophobia, literally and, and mentally, from, from all of these procedures and, and, and things that have to take place. Um, so we do have to be there to look after one another. At least we are united by technology, and at least people do have the opportunity to do, as, as we're doing, hanging out together. Um, so there's one positive, but it is going to have probably a flow-on effect for many years to come um, when people slowly get to have that freedom back. And I wonder if it'll make us rethink what, what is really necessary in this world. We're all so wrapped up in, in the things of this world and what car we drive and what house we live in and really is it is it that important? Interesting question here from Matthew Tino. <laughs> ah. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> it's all good whenever. I, yeah, oh, good. I'm not as interesting as most people, but okay. I always oh, it's, have my, to it's say. my job as an interviewer <laughs> to get the interesting stuff out of you. Don't worry about that. Uh, yeah. I'll find it. It's there. <laughs> I'm going to find it. <laughs> Brilliant. I look forward to it. Um, and since Brandon's interview was really interesting, if yeah, it's nice to hear yeah. the other side of that story, isn't it? Because you were impacted <laughs> by all of that nonsense, weren't you? So let's hear oh, your side oh, yeah. of things, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> gosh. Um, and Matthew that also still... says... Sorry, go on, Sasha. <clears throat> I was just going to say, Brandon, your your interview, the Fade Interrupted one, was still one of the ones that we receive a lot of comments about. It was still one of the ones with the best reaction. But to have that footage that you had was amazing at the yeah. front door. Yeah. It, it really brought it home. And Matthew Ooh. also saying, I asked Lloyd and Sasha a couple days ago if family members have contacted them since the outbreak. If you don't mind sharing, have your family <laughs> tried checking in on you? Really appreciated your interviews. Um, yeah, no. I haven't, I haven't heard anything from my mother, father, or sister, or the family in general. Yeah. Unfortunately. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're all in it together. We are. Indeed. Yeah. Well, Sasha had a phone call from his dad, but I've not had anything. Uh, so, yeah, it's a universal experience, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. Joel saying, I love how everyone is drinking a good wine. Except <laughs> Lloyd, he has vitamins. I do have my vitamin drink, my trusty vitamin drink, which I believe will help me evade the apocalypse. Um, Arthur. <laughs> is also due to the time zone uh, not drinking wine, though he seems to be caffeinating himself quite heavily on, uh, on Coca-Cola. Well, th this is only soda water today. The, of course uh, it last is. Of course it is. Last night's was terrible. I've already seen the gin bottle behind you. We're just oh, setting it back down. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, um, so, you got um, another comment, or can I share something else? Please do, Sasha. Um, we mentioned yesterday when we had Covert on um, the recommendation to um, for people if, they, if they're looking for content to listen to the JW Forwardcast podcast. Yeah. Um, again, if people are looking for any more content, any sort of entertaining light ways to, to look at things, maybe breaking free from religion and so on, 
I've got to recommend the, the How To Heretic podcast. If anyone hasn't had a chance to check it out yet, it's hosted by two ex-Mormon guys. Um, it's a brilliant podcast. Go back through the archives. The How To Heretic, little purple icon on your, on your uh, iTunes or podcast player of choice. Uh, really great way of looking at things. And particularly for those of us who have broken, woken up from um, Jehovah's Witnesses as well, it's nice just to be able to hear the parallels and see what it's like for those who have woken up from another high control organization. So, yeah, big, big, um, big reps for the How To Heretic podcast if you get a chance. Indeed. The, I think the, the commonalities between <clears throat> our uh, cult and others was, you know, definitely contributed to helping me wake up. Uh, yeah. I, I think that kind of goes back to the comments we were asking about, are, are the governing body diluted? I don't know. I haven't spent a, a lot of time around other uh, cult leaders in order to you know, see some commonalities there. But yeah. But at, at least the Jehovah's Witnesses are not doing what the Scientologists are doing right now and just calling the virus a hoax. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, really? Gosh. Wow. I'm supposed to be doing a free apostate with Chris Shelton, and he, he wanted to do it on the coronavirus response. So I didn't know that until you just told me. So that is fascinating. That should be interesting. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Wow. Um, How do they explain the deaths? Mm. Margus Nee Jr. saying, Great Tribulation started and drunk Tony goes to heaven. He can't take alcohol with him. <laughs> That's very true. How how does a spirit entity who's addicted to alcohol get through that situation? Yeah. I have a response for that. Or if it's duty free. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur's thoughts about this. Yes. The body is addicted to alcohol. The spirit isn't. The spirit <laughs> is addicted to spiritual food. Oh, okay. Good grief. So, uh, so when when Tony Morris goes <laughs> to heaven, he will feed on the, the the sayings and utterances of Jehovah God. I leave. Nebo nine. I oh man, you're, you're scary. You can start your own cult. <laughs> I'm. I'm like worried here. <laughs> Nesbo 9 reflecting the mood, I think, quite accurately there. Um, Simon Instone says, I want to see an impression of Stephen Lett, or however you spell his name, completely with his proper face antics. Who wants to go first? Don't encourage Arthur, please. <laughs> Let's see, Brandon. I'm, I'm, I'm really it's very curious. easy to do, Stephen. Like you just basically you loosen up your facial muscles and you go... We warmly oh. welcome you, dear <laughs> brothers and sisters, <laughs> to the John Cedars channel. That's indeed. Undoubtedly. <laughs> 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 nice, nice hey, I've got the elbow bump down. Oh, oh you've got I've... the elbow bump. <laughs> yeah. that, it's, not, it's not an elbow bump. It's it's an elbow bump. Elbow bump. <laughs> elbow bump. <laughs> Does it even let turn into Batman there? <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Tino, thank you. Oh, of the governing that. body, did anyone watch Jay's video on Sam wearing tight pants around Tony? I did not catch that video, but it sounds intriguing. Um, Beetroot Soup says, I've never been a JW, but I'm a great fan of your <laughs> channel, Lloyd. I live alone and was isolated even before COVID-19 and always found you such a great companion. Oh, thank you very much. I'm loving these live streams, watching in London, UK here. Thank you to all of you. Well, thank you so much for watching along from oh, dear old Blighty. How I miss <laughs> And we had a um, message while, while you had that from uh, Covert Fade, who was unable to join us tonight, but he passed on his greetings to everybody. So I'm sure he'll be back for another one of these uh, live streams, as will other members of the team. <laughs> Uh, I think we'll get an appearance from Mark and Kimmy O'Donnell in the next couple of days as well. Um, oh, should we do like the to... hashtag challenge? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I nominate Kimmy and Mark O'Donnell <laughs> to, to do the live sleep. stream challenge at what would it be like three o'clock a.m. their time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it's going to be easier for them to sacrifice their sleep at the weekend. So we're looking forward to seeing them, hopefully, at the weekend. 
Um, Eric Larson saying the spiritual Tony Morris will be so busy killing everyone that made fun of him. So yeah, probably his. his Can he mother. please change his name? It's a really triggering name uh, for yeah, us. Right. I mean, it's like, like <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, of course, Eric oh, Larson yes. was the same one that stalked. He's oh. on the news all the time. <laughs> Eric, is that a deliberate wow. name? Or is that actually your name? Uh, please let us know in the comments. <laughs> Yeah, and didn't we have a Jeff Jackson last night that messaged us? We had a Jeff I think Jackson. people are just did. messing with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but, but but Max Larson was what's spelled with an O, not with an E. <laughs> Connie uh, McCargish saying insomnia has never been so fun, guys. So yeah, we're uh, taking one for the team here. At least Brandon and Yvette are. Uh, oh yeah. Eric says, sorry, Brandon, a very <laughs> unfortunate name. No worries, man. No it worries. sounds like that is actually his name. Just don't show up at my door and try to disfellowship me. <laughs> <laughs> Gene saying, this is better than Good Morning Britain with Piers Morgan. Well, it doesn't take much, does it? I mean, let's face it. Um, and Eric pointing out, he happens to spell his name Eric Larson. Yeah, Eric's done his true. homework that here. He has done Distance his yourself, homework. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so um i don't know what to do at this point because we've kind of come to the end of the comments I'll, i'm going to keep an eye on on the comments as they come in sasha has already regaled us with poetry oh we did have um a video comment come through sasha oh, you've good. seen this haven't you yes so let's play the video comment Hi Lloyd, it's Monica Owens from the United States. Um, I am not able to watch these live because of my work schedule uh, over here in America, but I do wanna thank you for everything that you're doing and it would take me a lot longer than 30 seconds to express my appreciation for everything, but it's great to start the day with the playback that you're uploading on YouTube. It's my daily dose of sanity before work and I sure am glad to see you every morning. Talk to you soon. Oh, Thank you so much, Monica. Yeah, Monica is one of my patrons, and she's always popping up. So whenever I do uh, a normal live stream under normal circumstances, she's one of the ones who pops up. So lovely to see you, Monica. Thank you so much for your support of my work. If anyone else is interested in sending through a video comment, the address that you need to send it to, well, actually, Monica did hers via Facebook. But if you wanted to record a, th it needs to be no more than 30 seconds due to the software I'm using. But you can either email it to this address or if you upload it to Google Drive, share it to this email address. I'm almost certainly going to regret handing out one of my email addresses. But I think desperate times call for desperate measures. And I think it's just encouraging to see a few of you. Uh, so please do send in video messages just in case anyone's wondering why I'm not streaming on YouTube. It's because I'm currently banned due to a failed attempt <laughs> at doing a watch along of a Gilead graduation. And YouTube hit me with a copyright strike, which means I can't live stream until June the 12th. I am, if I'm honest, really annoyed about it. And I'm, I, I wish there was a way of just pleading with YouTube and saying, look, I'll take the strike, but given the times that we're, we're in and the mm. fact that people need a little bit of comfort, can you at least let me live stream? But obviously they're not going to make an exception for me, but my workaround is to stream on Facebook and Twitch and then upload it later on. And I figure, look, for the sake of 90 minutes in my morning, if we can just provide people with a little bit of distraction at these worrying times, then I'm quite happy to do that. And so far, I've noticed that the viewing figures have been quite good for, for the episodes that are being uploaded. That's really nice to see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, for all of the fun that we have, we know that people are going through some really serious situations too. And yeah, if, if anything that we can do just helps to, to let you all know that we're not alone, you're not alone. Um, every part of the world is affected by this as far as we're aware so every single person is affected to some degree and yeah we've, we've got you we, we don't have any answers to things but we're just a bunch of friends that you can hang out with and we appreciate the opportunity to be invited into your home yep. indeed glad to be doing our part 
message here from Nesbo9. Can Jehovah's hand stop me from eating all the lockdown <laughs> chocolate? Word. <laughs> gonna I feel leave, you. <laughs> gonna leave the house too stone heavier. That is a, a strange kind of that's another thing that, that kind of life in the coronavirus outbreak is. Oh, the, <laughs> Arthur's got his within arm's reach. He never is more than a meter away from a bar at any given time. That is that is it like another aspect of life in this pandemic is our whole attitude to provisions. I mean, obviously we, we joke about the whole toilet paper thing, but what impact is it having on you guys when it comes to you know your food storage and, and your frequency of shopping and all that side of things? I have a teenager in the house. I still have to go shopping. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And what's it like when you go shopping? What are the shops like? You know, it. I have been very lucky. It hasn't been bad. No one's been there when I was there and able to find everything I need. I think I've lucked out because all my friends have said, ah, they're out of everything. I'm like, I got rice. I got bread. I got chips. Mm, yeah. I got chocolate. We, it, it, <laughs> with, with, with all the additional, we, we have a little bit more in the pantry than we normally would. But, you know, that, that's what we've been encouraged to do to re reduce our trips out. <laughs> if, if, if we get, get in the closet and we're kind of hovering in there, one of us has to just yank the other one out. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I've We hide I'm, food. Yeah. We do hide food yeah. from the boy child yeah. back there. It's like <laughs> under the bed. It's, it's not like just a, a lockdown, lockdown. It's a food lockdown. Yeah. It's, it's a food right, lockdown. Right. Yeah. We got a ration, okay? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've had um, some beautiful stories um, you know, we've been hearing, though, about little communities pulling together and, and sharing amongst neighbours, throwing things to neighbours over the fence and oh, you need a bag of rice, we'll have a bag of flour. It, it's, it's actually brought people together. Indeed. Uh, Vicky Wells saying, I have a lock on my fridge. Seriously, my kids have tapeworm. Gosh. Um, yeah, we, we're actually quite fortunate in the Evans family because literally, and we hadn't planned this, um, we have like an oddly shaped apartment with two kind of small kind of nooks at each end. And one nook we use for our TV. Um, the other nook hasn't really been used for anything. And we realized with it being where the kitchen is, it would make an ideal pantry. And so we, we, we finally managed to find some local builders to come and build it for us and they literally just finished it before the lockdown so we've been able to stock it with with food which we otherwise would have struggled to find a space for it but it's it's interesting how the timing has just fallen together perfectly and jehovah's you know, we, hand obviously jehovah's hand is, <laughs> yeah. is evident in matters there um let's just see here scrolling through the comments um beetroot soup says yeah i've been eating too much to boredom and loneliness i'm afraid <laughs> yeah that's the thing i suppose for many comfort eating will be a thing won't <clears throat> it you know uh when you're self-isolating just uh do what you can i suppose to get through um so in just... your parts of the world are you guys all allowed to go out for a walk around the block or a little bit of exercise or is it strict lockdown oh we can walk around the block the parks just got closed today right like at midnight yeah on wednesday it's wednesday there, there, now, there, so. were, there were just far too many people congregating in the parks and, and clogging things up and being too close to proximity right. so or, there goes or, or, or getting themselves and, into situations where they you had to require people to come assist them and, and help them off the trail if they hurt themselves and whatnot. So yeah, the actual good hiking trails around here have been shut down yeah. with signs, which is really sad. Yeah. But around, and is that, is that just because yeah. of the risk of something entirely unrelated to COVID nineteen happening yeah. that would or that would use up emergency uh, personnel? Both of those. Yeah. Both of yeah. those. One of the popular ones were too many people, like. Everyone's off work. No one's working. So they all go hiking. Um, and the other one sh was shut down. The other very popular one was shut down because there were like six rescues on that trail oh. in one day. <laughs> they kept wow. finding people. Wow. So, <laughs> so it's like, we can't, we can't have you guys up here. We need to worry about they, they, people they, who have not put themselves at risk. Yeah. yeah. 
They they misread the memo. They thought it said work from trail instead of work from home. Yeah. And I, honestly, I was ready to go out hiking. I was yeah. like, hey, as long as your shoulder's feeling better, maybe when it's sunny, we go out hiking. And then they were like, don't do that. Stay home. Hmm. Victoria Roberts offering her services. Um, I'm a slimming world consultant. <laughs> maybe I can help. Who are you being specific with someone on the panel here? I'm feeling quite. Uh, <laughs> I'm being judged. Yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't had a smoothie yet, Margus. Um, we did have a, a brief conversation earlier, myself and Deanna, uh, that she had some confusion over how to access the live stream. And uh, it seemed, it just seemed like the wrong moment to say, Will you make me a smoothie? Um, <laughs> ma maybe but, uh, she'll. Margus. By the way, did um, Diana manage to? I, I, she, it was, it was weird. She came in and she was wearing her coat and everything as though she was like spending time in the garden. I think what she was doing was probably Jessica wanted to play in the snow because there's lots of snow outside, and so probably Diana reluctantly took her out and thought, while Jessica's messing around in the snow, I'm going to listen to the live stream. Probably that's what it is. And for the last two or three days, she's had no problem at all. Uh, listening along to the live stream, but for some reason today she's she struggled. So, by the way, how did Julia react to the snow? Uh, well, you saw the picture. <laughs> I posted the picture on Facebook, and she looks very unimpressed. But when she first encountered the snow, she did look quite interested in what it was, and she was patting it and that kind of thing. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, just before you move from Margus's um, his, his avatar there or his pictures, just made Diana. Sorry, Diana, else. saying exactly that. She just, oh, but at least yeah. at least this proves that she's now on the live stream. So welcome, Diana. Hi, um, Diana. No pressure. Tomorrow you need to appear. Yeah. It, but if if smoothies are in the process of being made, <laughs> I, I want in on that action. So just putting it out there, just floating it out there for what it's worth. Okay. So carry on. Carry on. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I was just going to mention with the picture of the avatar there, Margus had his, uh, his fur baby in his arms. Um, I'm wondering how people around the world are coping with their, with their pets, their pets that are having to be, um, have their routines completely. Oh, There's, there is so, an animal of, of said description <laughs> looking like the, actually, is it dead? No, oh, can you just poke it for it? Just Have you got a dead dog in your room? <laughs> no, 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 no. Think you're asleep, Sick, Arthur. So how, how can we have proof of life, please? I think so. uh, let me, let me, let me try. It. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, lots of people are going to be traumatized, and we don't want to traumatize people. Never wake a sleeping dog. This could be. Oh, fun. it's alive! Oh. There we go. Oh. There we go. So how, how are things with pet owners? Are you allowed to take them out for walks? Are you allowed to, um, yeah, or are they having to be cooped up in the same way? What, what's, what's the situation around the world? I'd be interested to know. What I've with walking dogs, animals? Dogs, yeah. yeah oh, maintaining actually, this. sorry, just but, excuse me, folks. This is important yes, business. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> darling, I would love a hot chocolate, a hot chocolate. <laughs> So, apologies for the mix-up earlier, but uh, if you could manage one, maybe with some cookies. <laughs> oh, that would oh be now you're pushing it. <laughs> and and definitely make it hot. <laughs> you see, we're not supposed to give people nightmares, Arthur. We're supposed to cheer people up and distract them from the pandemic. <laughs> Joel Brown says, "My doggo and I." It sounds like an Australian word for dog, doesn't it? Are you taking the yeah. dog out for a walk? <laughs> um, <laughs> my, my doggo and I go for walking often. Love living in the country. It is quite useful to be in the country nice. during a pandemic. It must be said. You do mm. feel slightly less at risk. We we feel a little bit safer out here where we live. Um, yeah, absolutely. Sarah Lindsay says our dogs have a run so they get out as often as they like yeah our, we have quite a big garden as well so um we and we have a very small dog so big garden small dog it can basically entertain yes. itself although where we live it must be said while we're on the issue of pets um 
Croatians who live in our area seem to some are in the habit of chaining up animals and chaining up oh. dogs, and it can be quite distressing sometimes if you do go for a walk locally and you're walking past houses where you see these dogs on chains and you think, oh, that's really, really cruel, but it's just the way things are, unfortunately. Uh, Connie McCargish says, dog parks are still open for now here, and we still take our dog out for walks. Yeah, and I think the direction in uh, the UK is that you can still go out for exercising. So I suppose what's stopping you from exercising with your dog, you know? Whereas Italy, you're not even allowed to go out for a run anymore by yourself. Really? Well, so, I suppose that's to be expected, isn't it, given yeah. what's happening there? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mar Marina Soldatos Kuzupis says, we are allowed to take out our dogs after sending SMS. Oh, wow. Does that wow. mean you actually ask for SMS permission? Like a temporary to... permit or something? That's actually not a bad idea, is it? Because otherwise it's just a free-for-all, but at least they can monitor how many, what the sort of movements are. So that's interesting. And actually, speaking of SMS, I got a text from the government yesterday, which never happens, um, because my phone is a UK phone, and the, the sender says UK underscore gov, uh, coronavirus alert, new rules in force now. You must stay at home. More info and exemptions at gov.uk coronavirus. Stay at home. Protect the NHS. Save lives. I don't know whether you can see that. Wow. So yeah. I don't know. I'm not aware of any situation before where a gov the government has actually sent me a text. So. We got one yesterday from our largest um, telecommunications provider. Um, Telstra, and it said the same thing to be alert to the government's directions, um, have a look at what the status is, and that seems to have been just a general text sent out to the population. We had Brown. nothing. We had to search for it. No. Yeah, they're a little bit behind though, aren't they, really, I suppose. Yeah. And does, does Trump still think this is all some kind of hoax? He's changed his tune, but he's allowing to let people die if it means the economy will get better. So. Oh, right. Okay. Fair enough. We also, Everything we back also to normal. Hmm. Oh, and you've, you've, yeah. you've had a text as well, Arthur, yeah. it seems. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we don't. We can't read it, but it's uh, certainly a text message we can confirm. Yeah, respect the um, so recommendations to, to avoid uh, <clears throat> the new coronavirus getting spread. Stay in the house. Uh, as much as possible, avoid direct or, or indirect contact with other people, keep distance of at least six feet from one another, and so on. Sarah Lindsay, mm. getting the wrong end of the stick here. Are you saying that your government <laughs> thinks you, Lloyd, are a special threat to public safety? I'm not sure that that's how it was supposed to be interpreted, Sarah, but probably I am a We like how public. you think, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, that's good. <laughs> Um, a a a drill says we had a guy stopped by the police on his way to work at my company. Wow. Um, wow. Desperate times, I suppose. Um, and Vicky Wells says yes. There was also another story where a guy <laughs> bought. A f <laughs> no, <laughs> come on, Vicky. <laughs> come on. Or <laughs> a fake dog. Are we talking like taxidermist, or are we talking like a soft toy? Just on the end of a stick. <laughs> uh, I, that's going to fool no one. <laughs> so I'd have to see that's photographic awesome. evidence of that. Otherwise, I'm, I'm calling fake Walking news. Around with a leash. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seriously. I want the photographic <laughs> evidence, Vicky. Seriously, you can't drop that on us. We need to see <laughs> photographic evidence. Um, Undoubtedly. Undoubtedly. Complete uh, with a fake plastic bag to pick up after the fake dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had a message from Joel uh, earlier in relation to the situation, the ongoing situation with my supposed hot cocoa. <laughs> Thanks, Diana, for lending us your husband. <laughs> it has to be said that I'm, I'm monitoring the bunker door and uh, so far very little action. Oh, Nope. Looks like it's here. <laughs> Talk among yourselves. <laughs> so Hello. Did, is, we we Sorry. definitely have to um, put the call out to the rest of our team for others to join us, including Diana, if she'd like to make an Come appearance on this in the next of the couple camera. of days. You're, you're, uh... 
on delay uh, on my... Uh, Come on this side. You're in delay. Today. Diana, no, seriously. That's you'll a give a, You'll give a lot of joy to 57 people on the live stream now. 57 people who whose day will be a little bit brighter mm. if they can just see you for a few seconds. Hey. At least Lloyd didn't beat you with a pillow. Diana. 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 Come, Come on, just say hello. That's how we it do it in America. Diana. <laughs> just say hello quickly. There's the camera there. Or tomorrow. <laughs> hello. hello Hi, Diana. Hello. Wait. Take your headphones out. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, you're on delay um, in yeah, my uh, yeah. headphones. Yeah. Hi, Diana. Yeah, that's a technical issue. Hi. I'm not hi, camera Diana. worthy, but here I am. Where are you? What, what I'm not either. All oh, right, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At, um, at least um, you didn't get dragged out of bed like Brandon did. Yeah, and be with a pillow, yeah. <laughs> oh, believe me, I was dragged out of my bed, but much earlier and by children. <laughs> oh, yes. That's way worse. <laughs> oh, yeah. And cookies, wow. Yeah. So spoiled. Oh. I want a wife. <laughs> well, I'm taken, Evie. <laughs> but Can't it, believe you're uh, trying. <laughs> uh, it, it's great to see you all. And um, these, these live streams are actually a joy for me as well because while I'm doing my uh, things with the, the girls, I can have it in my ear and just walk about the house and listen to everybody. So thanks for joining in. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. From Thank you for joining people joining people in live to this morning. Uh, how are you, Arthur? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Good. Not struck by the virus, fortunately. Fantastic. Stay safe. Yeah. Uh, thanks. You too. Okay. And give you a big hug to the girls. Of I will, thank you. <laughs> uh, I will have to go now because I need to do PA with Jessica and Joe Wicks uh, on, um, what is it, the Body Coach uh, YouTube mm -hmm. channel. So, yeah, uh, time to get my workout done. Okay. <laughs> Thanks Love for joining to us. See you. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, bye. Good to see you. Bye. Well, apart from rescuing me with a hot cocoa, that has also rescued the live stream, which needed to be taken up to the 90-minute mark when we were flagging a little bit. So <laughs> that means that uh, Brandon and Yvette can uh, resume their horizontal state uh, and get some much-needed shut-eye. <laughs> it also means that uh, Arthur can <laughs> practice... Practice his triggering speech for future live streams. Oh, good grief! Oh, <laughs> Lord! And, and Lloyd, you immediately can, you can go hand. away and um, you can go away and practice the song that you will regale the rest of us with tomorrow, Lloyd. Sasha, my live stream, <laughs> my rules. Um, <laughs> you, you you need to be thinking about your poetry corner in the next show. <laughs> so. He keeps sending you to the corner. What did you do so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we uh, have. So we have Covert Fade introducing the news, we have Sasha's Poetry Corner, and we have Lloyd's Music Minutes. No, no, no. My live stream, my rules, and on that note, we'll end it there. But, and, like you... and of course, Brandon's Battle Bits. Oh boy. Oh, that, yes. that sounds rude. Sorry that today. sounds like it's really not that kind of live stream, Arthur. Um, is that is that like a spin-off of Pillowgate? Uh, anyway, so listen, thank you so much to all of you for bringing levity and comfort and and banter to people's pandemic lockdown. I hope viewers you have enjoyed our chat. Don't forget to subscribe for uh, future live stream uploads and don't forget to join if you can on facebook forward slash lloyd evans and twitch.tv forward slash lloyd evans we'd love to have you along if possible if you're awake for future coronavirus lockdown live streams but that's pretty much everything we have for you and we will see you soon take care hang in there folks bye bye, bye. thank you for watching <laughs>